What's up? Well, that was weak. That's weak. What's going on out there? Anybody want to talk about some blades? Ah, yes, maybe so. About time. Get some stuff going on out on the patio. Are we all up in it? Hey, Jigsaw. Yeah, what's going on? I just got some blades out here on the table. This may not be enough light, but this is what we're going to get for just messing around out on the patio in southern Arizona, even though today, actually, we have some cloud cover. So how crazy is that? Mr. Matthew Harris, Power Med Headbanger, Big Sean, Spirited Whiskey. Yes. Zigfos? Is that how it is, Junior? <laughs> Fuel addiction, please help. I'm just trying to see if I can find my own damn, uh, my own damn uh, video, and apparently it's not posting. So let's see if we can do that. That way I could actually see everybody's uh, chit chat on here. All right. And yes, what's going on everybody? I've got some blades out here, got my Vexor, which I really like. I know it's a little big, uh, but I really, really like the action on this one. You guys can check it out. What's your most carried knife this month? Uh, I'd say this one. It's really, it's really so smooth. I don't know. Um, what you guys feel about it if you have one this and that women carry knives blank and chip zombie yeah this one here i know it's big it's not that heavy i really like it i dyed it myself i dyed the other one green and i think that hit like a 59 or 60 hrc i haven't got the knife back but i sent it to kurt for uh Devil Merc. Um, Dark Soul Rising. Okay. Mr. Is that Robert? Is that you, buddy? Um, did you get those knives I sent you, by the way? But, nah, this one's so smooth. But, yeah, I had the other one tested. Of course, this is D2. And uh, so 59, maybe around 60. I'll have to. I'm going to do a video on it later. So I'll, so I'll figure uh what the exact is because i don't have it in front of me there's the deca yeah you were saying you do you like that um you know i do like the deca it's so lightweight two and a half ounces i know the benchmade is a little bit lighter you know the bug out but not a whole lot and then the screamer uh i carried this one yesterday and yes i like it i like these cutouts here i like the contrasting backspacer uh i like the satin the size is fine it's not that big but it's definitely not that small and it's fairly tall it gives you something in the hand to hold on to so yeah Savivi's been crushing it in terms of productivity. Yeah, I think so, too, at that price point. I, I really do. Uh, I had somebody else. And, you know, also, Best Tech is not to be ignored. I'm just looking for them to do something as awesome as they did with the, with the swordfish here. And, like, oh, what are the others? The Paladin, things like that. I just haven't done anything real recently. I guess the Texel is the other one, and I don't have one. Who begged that one off of me? I can't remember, but it went away. But, you know, that is also another one. But these are good. These are really, really good. Savivi, yes. 
Savivi's uh, been coming up with some really great designs, and Joe Chung is the CEO, but he's the main knife designer for that, too. So, yeah. How crazy is that? Um, I'm going to try and do something here, because for some reason, I'm not able to see. Here we go. Thank God for small favors. I finally clicked into my my iPad so I can see your feed. You guys now are, are stars on my channel. There you go. All you guys. The strawberry girl. What? You talking about me, Willis? We need a Savivi Sea Lock. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, okay, now I can see what the hell's going on. Where is Linus? He's over in Sweden. He probably fell asleep, damn it. It's midnight his time, a little past midnight, but he said he was going to join us on the chat. And he's going to be with me at the 2021 SHOT Show in Las Vegas. No, he's not going to be uh, in Atlanta at Blade, but I'm going to go to Blade. That'll be my first time at Blade. Last year, was waiting for a grandson to get born, and he was stubborn. So I miss Blade. He's out. He's about. He's getting bigger. But, uh, hey, Fixed Blade. Did somebody mention Fixed Blade? Let me show you something. This is just going to be a BS ses session anyhow right now. Chad, where are you, buddy? Kadazar from that Midwestern state called Kansas. Jayhawk. Are you a Jayhawk, Chad? Ah, oh, Lord. Okay, so I got this from Turin knives and i got it on i was cruising aliexpress and i don't know why there's so much stuff out in the main sites anymore these days that's why i hardly ever go to ollie but i mean this caught my eye snakewood mosaic pin and it's supposed to be m390 i I think I checked a tour and knife before. I'll tell you one thing. This is definitely going to go in for PMI. If this is real M390, then this is the shits, man. I'm going to do a review on this, but I think this was 70 some dollars, something like that, I'm going to say. It's sharp. I think it's sexy. What do you think? Anybody? <laughs> we were still looking for everybody. Christine, finally answer. <laughs> LOL. Okay, women carry knives. Here we are. Anybody paying attention to what I'm saying? Anybody? <laughs> Never mind. So what do you think about this? This is python. I think this is supposed to be python skin. I guess they can't kill them quick enough in the Everglades. So I don't think they're endangered. That's for sure. So uh, maybe it really is it's leather it smells like leather that's for sure so i don't know i know i, I mean you know it's an aliexpress thing and i know a lot of people put that crap down but it's interesting it's a crazy world of hodgepodge there's so many people always talking about aliexpress saying hey uh i'm afraid of going of you know using my credit card on that site has anybody ever looked up alibaba okay they're like one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, they, I looked them up. Finally, I got into it. And they do more online sales volume than Amazon plus the online sales of Walmart combined. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about. First of all, Chinese hackers stealing my credit card off a Chinese site because I think that would be really bad for business if that ever got out. But so I've never I've never had an issue there. And anytime I've had a complaint, I file a dispute and and it usually it always goes in my favor if I don't get the knife or whatever. And sometimes I get the knife a couple weeks later. I've had guys come to me and say, holy crap. I filed a dispute. It was two months. I finally got my money back. And sure enough, three days later, the knife arrived. So I got both. Um, can't send the knife back to China. So uh, are here in the UK. Okay, EDC Live. Uh, some knives we have to get on AliExpress as here in the UK. American knives are not available. Hmm. Okay. Use PayPal. It's safer. You know what, uh, Zombie? You're right. I use 
my PayPal debit card. And at first they were declining and I just called PayPal and I go, excuse me? And they go, oh, oh, okay. Well, we thought somebody took your card or blah, blah, blah. And so they can reset the settings, the protection settings on that to allow you to use it on AliExpress DHgate. So that's what I use. I use my PayPal debit card. So, um, OCD4EDC, how are you doing? Hernandez, what's going on today? Have you got coronavirus from AliExpress? Hold on. Where is that knife? Let me lick the sheath. Well, I'll let you know in 14 days. <laughs> oh, man. People are going insane on that. Nah, uh, you know, of course, you know, CBS, NBC, ABC, they, uh, they start out and you would think everybody was scattering for the streets. You'd think it was a nuclear holocaust because they want to lay it on thick. They're looking for advertising dollars. And I know it's something to be concerned about. Yes, I think people need to take precautions. Yes, but it, I mean, they make it look like, I mean, the world is, it's a holocaust and it's, it's all but over. And that's just crazy. I just, whatever. I love the Vexer. And I'll tell you the big cutaway. And this is one that Joe actually designed. And, you know, this kind of cutaway is something he's done in some other knives. But they've all been popular. And, man, that thing is so smooth. And I thought, well, I got another one. You know, and then I dyed it. I thought I was dyeing it Caribbean blue. And it turned out that funky wild green. In any case... It's not back yet, or I'd show it to you. But here's the thing. I thought, well, maybe this is an anomaly. But the second one was just as smooth. So go figure, right? Nice. <laughs> What's the hand sanitizer? Oh, uh, really? <laughs> okay. All right. All right, now, oh, Montosa, somebody was saying, oh, it looks like the blade's broken off or something. Maybe it just got, when I do my Instagram posting, sometimes the tip of the knife or this and that, I swear to God, you got to get like 500 miles away to get the whole knife in because the video gets insta-sized. What you see through your camera when you're doing the video is not what Instagram shows. So you got to get further away. You got to get your own per perspective on that whatever so uh but no uh i don't mind this i think this is nice for uh you know richard rogers design the ceo was nice this is getting better this is on washers i haven't done this review yet but uh this is pretty flickable uh not exactly the blade steel i'd dream of having and, you know, you just can't give up on this, can you? The Hornet. Talk about different blade shapes. I think that's what Linus was saying. Hey, different blade shapes. Um, so, this is definitely a different blade shape. The Hornet. I, I, when I did my review on it, which I ought to redo, I was kind of pissy about the fact that they were using the total length. If I would have done the lanyard hole, I would have brought this backspacer out here or done a hole through here, put it here, and then made the blade long enough to fit this handle. But they brought it short because this they decided to put the paracord through there. So, mm, yeah. But I've really warmed up to it. I've got one of these in green and one of these in red. Did the lanyard myself, by the way. So now we got variable sun. It was overcast. Now it's coming through, making everything funky. So what's going on, people? A lot of Newcastle brown here in the UK. I used to drink Newcastle. I really like that. Um, oh, Samuel Smith Pale Ale. Man, I just love that stuff. That is beautiful. Except, uh, sorry, been drinking a lot of Coors Light. When it's hot... You want a beer that tastes like nothing. Oh, something else that's one of these unknown knives out here lately. I've had this one put back on the shelf, but I grabbed it because I thought maybe. Um, this one actually turned out 
better than I thought it was going to do turn out and the the Migron and this is the Centurion lucky I could remember that but I think this is a Scott Lawson design here if you look back on my review of this and it's got that red and red plus shred I guess you call that red plus shred carbon fiber stuff interesting i can't remember if i sent this in for an hrc if i did i don't think i've reported on it and no i haven't yet so uh i did the previous one the migaron prayer and that one was good so and it was real s35 so uh this one is uh is not S35. This one was M390. Guess you, these ended up where you could get them on White Mountain Knives, etc. So there you go with that. Any other BS stuff? Anybody want to talk about some? Uh, what else? I got CRKT on the table. I've got. Oh, I was going to talk about it. I don't think I've brought this one up on review yet and talk about fixed blade. This Reich. Uh, knife F1 and you know what it should say F1 right here yeah okay and this is not the one the one that actually got HR tested rock weld was one I sent back to Jason Guilfoyle if you're out there Jason and it was a 63 HRC I believe and so sent it to Outpost 76, Gerald, for cutting tests. And it cut over 200 foot, which is good because uh, this is D2. But this is CPM D2. All right. And that blade handle looks blue. I See, I got it brown, but it's kind of a medium brown. So it went a darker blue than I would have wanted. But it's, it's hard to hit. So you can't go light can't go lighter so that's all you can do um <clears throat> but t standard chinese d2 is running about a hundred foot working edge on their cardboard medium that they use up to maybe 110 120 and this went over 200 so uh, this almost doubled what the standard Chinese D2 vanadium levels being variable in the D2 and also uh, the heat treat being a little bit more tricky on D2 than some other types of steel. So you like this one? Aliens had it. I'll tell you what, I think you could skin with it. You know, I think you can do a lot of things with this. Uh, Self-defense, definitely. Get up here like this. Uh, it's big for a skinning knife, but I, it's got the, it's got that nice grind that you could use and that kind of belly that you could use for that. So actually, I think it'd be usable, easy to remove the scales, super easy. Um, but yeah, that is wicked looking and bottle opener hey anybody want me to open a bottle with this <laughs> all i have is barley pop out here oh and it's in an aluminum can so there you go or is it aluminium which one is it <sighs> if you're brit british it's aluminium i'll tell you another thing i'm gonna get pmi damn it is this stuff you know i've been i've had guys ask me about these effing ground knives going they're swearing that they've they're not lying anymore and they're back to d2 or you know blah 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 well i think you know effing growl was rebranding a bunch of knives that they didn't know what the hell it was and the people that manufactured them and sold them to effing growl to sell under their name were saying it was uh d2 this one got a, a poke on it. It got an HRC, and I can't remember what that was. Uh, and I'll report on that later, but they couldn't PMI it. I got another source to do PMIs, so I'm going to do that. This is, is this a, 
This is a beast, isn't it? I just really liked the design. Somebody drew my attention to it. It's the EF912. And of all the things on God's green earth you could buy. But I think this was all of like 60 bucks. So, there you go. But I think it's, I mean, it's a great looking design. Look at the backspacer. Looks like a light blue anno. Gold pocket clip. I mean, for 60 something dollars, and it's really smooth and it's really heavy. Uh, but it's, uh, oh, and laid on the detent too. But it's a cool design. Look at these fullers. I bet you could, yeah, because the detent's not that strong. You could just kick this baby out. Come on. Yeah, just like that. Not too bad. Okay, what else? I had two of these others that people drew my attention to. So let's go down this vicious path. This one here. And this, someone drew my attention to some a certain brand. And it, had, it was this knife design here, okay? And so I, I went, it was on AliExpress. So I went somewhere else and found that Effen Grau also had the exact same knife rebranded under their name, so I bought it, and there it is right here. EF913, so. Uh, that was just on Amazon as well. And then this dog was uh, pathetic. Uh, who was it? Was it Candazar? Chad Candazar showed this in Edge Addicted or some, one of our... Uh, Facebook groups and I said that is a crazy design and I got it but I was a little disappointed by the overall quality of it when I got it but it's it's cheap as chips and it's got oil all over it but is that a crazy harpoon style interesting now who am I ignoring here M390 Sabenza So what, uh, you sent it to Kurt? They gave me my money back on it, so I took a chance. Okay. Um, need a knife fix effing growl on Amazon is cheap. Yeah, it is, it is, and I've got Prime membership because I got burned out on Netflix, no new decent stuff so i went from there to prime and then so i get you know free shipping as well and they have a fulfillment warehouse up in phoenix so yeah you can get these damn near overnight uh and so i got these three i'm gonna have them all pmi'd and if they ain't d2 i'm gonna shout it from the highest hill because i'm sick and damn tired I mean, six of six so far have been a lie. So, uh, but those are their cheaper G10 crap. So, anybody want to look at Cansep knives? Anybody seen these out for sale yet? Because what are my thoughts on N690? Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I think it's a good usable steel. I mean, why why is it a problem? I know a lot of people are equating it to maybe a 440C. Or, I mean, it's a stainless. It's a user steel. Um, the way D2 has not been performing all that well these days, uh, I don't really give a damn about D2. So I'm not going to say, oh, God, I wish it was D2. And so VG10... I, you know, I don't know that there's a dime's worth of difference between N690 and VG10. Oh, now I got the National Guard going to land in my backyard. Love that. Um, they go, hey, he's, he's live streaming. Let's, let's screw up his day. Thank you, boys. Um, but yeah, this is, these are three knives I got from Cancept. I think this is the Cryo, yeah. K R Y O. So who was the, hold on. The designer 
which is Kim Ning. He was their main in-house designer for Cancept. Okay. Um, he was the main in-house designer for Kaiser. Then he left. Then Cancept was created. Uh, Joyce is my contact there, and I don't know her last name right off the top of my head. I got her card. She left Kaiser and went to Cancept as well. So Cancept is going to be, I think, probably making knives at least on the level of Kaiser or better. I've seen postings on their Instagram. Looks like their cryo is about ready to hit the shores whenever. I mean, you know, all the stuff has slowed down because of the coronavirus, so all this is insane. But these are ones that I got from her at SHOT Show. So I don't know that they can pack the knives up and take them back to China with them because uh, China doesn't allow the import of these knives. That's why you can't return knives on AliExpress and some of these to China. But uh, here's another one. These are all Kim Ning designs, so they put the burden on him to do these. And this is the Warrior but I like it because it's got micarta on both sides. It's not a flipper. It's a nice, slender look to it. But good-looking knife. QSP. You know, I like QSP knives. And, of course, I was talking to uh, David Cam, who's, you know, Blade Banner. Uh, he was at the booth at the SHOT Show, so that's who I do, did my video with. And, yeah, I, I think they're making some really good stuff. Um, on some of it, I mean, like the Songbird is really nice, that kind of stuff. Uh, there are titanium ones, but I think they're probably going to get more kudos on their G10 stuff than on the titanium. It's really hard to put out a titanium uh, knife and uh, stand out in the crowd because there's so many other high-end knives out there. I think if you want to call attention to yourself, you really need to be in that budget range to compete there. I think there's more money, there's more players in that market than throwing out $250 knives. So, yes, but I think they do a good job. I, I, you know, I have no bitch with it. The ones that I've had, the first ones that came out, the very, very first ones that I got my hands on, no, I wasn't terribly impressed with the G10 stuff. But it has morphed. It has really changed very quickly. Within a year, they were there with any of the G10 guys, pretty much. I mean, like, CJRB, Civivi, that kind of thing. I think they're right in there with them. The Penguin. Yeah, you know, I don't have the Penguin in my hand, Big Red EDC. No, I don't. Uh, I need to get that. I saw that online the other day and was thinking that might be a good one to get my hands on. But these are interesting I'm going to be interested in seeing what Cancep does going forward uh, and see if they start doing some G10 stuff. Did you see? I didn't see any G10 stuff on their table yet, and I haven't kept up on their Instagram for sure, for sure, but I don't believe I've seen any G G10 stuff on their Instagram either. So you like this knife? It is pretty, and it is light. They call it the Fisher or the Fishing Knife or something like that. It's translation stuff. But, you know, I could see this definitely uh, as a fillet knife, although, really, because it ought to, you know, if you're going to have a knife for filleting fish, cleaning fish and stuff, you want a plastic handle, G10 handle, something like that, you know. But this blade stock is slender. So definitely, yes, uh, you could use that for that. But mm, yeah, I think it'd be a little bit more uh, upkeep uh, when you're using it in a wet environment. 
And how crazy is this on my table? Oh, guys. You know, are you keeping up with uh, Sean? Hassan Tepe Designs. I mean, he does so many cool ones. And, of course, he did the Shockwave. And he's uh, done the TS-180. Oh, God. What's that called? It's right on the tip of my tongue. But And then, of course, he and... uh, Night Morning did the Maverick, which was a TS-177, and on and on. But, you know, he's doing the Hornet, and where's my... And the Killage. So they're going to be... There's the Killage right here. This is in process of being made, too, right now. And... I don't know what happened to Linus. He just disappeared. Okay, here we go. Um... That's the Hornet in G10. So I got the Hornet in G10 because it was less expensive. Plus, it's just a beater I can drag around with me. I don't have to worry about. But it's got the nice ceramic ball, titanium pocket clip. Right like that. And yeah, this is D2, not N690. But, I mean, if it was N690, I'd be happy. This is N690, but this ain't no $250 knife. And he wasn't charging that for it either. But uh, titanium, nice. And, of course, where's my... uh, Damn it, I'm reaching across the table. When When I can't reach and get a knife anymore, I'm shutting it off, guys. Yes, the full size Hornet. Check it out with that. And this, I think, is lighter or no heavier. I mean, this is super, super lightweight. And when I was looking on his Instagram watching the development of this handle, because it's contoured, and they're having to sand this down. And what a pain in the butt that's got to be with masks on and everything. Uh, Wow. That's crazy, but this is M390, and this is a big dog, but it is a great-looking knife. Great-looking knife. I think maybe, uh, I'm not sure if this is my favorite of his designs because he's made so many. If he made that shockwave with a 4-inch blade and did it in G10, I think that would be my favorite budget knife. I really do. That's so cool. But this one, wow. I guess I should carry this more often, but... (sighs) Colby? No, it wasn't called Colby, was it? Uh, What do I think about Harns? Wolverine knife? You know, I don't think I brought any of my Heinz out, out here, but my Harns out here. I have three Harns knives, uh, the Warrior. Um, I'm I'm not sure about the Wolverine. Uh, There's another long, slender one. And, of course, you're going to ask me, somehow you intuitively know which knife I don't have out on my table. So you'll ask me about that one. Congratulations, you win that contest. But, no, I do have three of them, and I have them... To review on my channel at some point in time they're in the line and they keep getting pushed back because i have something come in that's a little bit more time sensitive um but tucson pumps out knives like a street <laughs> what okay never mind everybody can read it um assassin yes i've got the assassin and the warrior and the other one that comes in uh well the warrior i think comes in a in a belt pouch too uh, and those are big ass dogs and you can get them on amazon i think that's where i got mine although i think i got the assassin on um power cutlery because he does carry that brand it's just whether he has them or not available so check with power cutlery usa dealer also for ganzo knives because you'll get it in like two days so why offer get it off of you know fast tech or some of that stuff you don't want to get it off a chinese site you wait two to three weeks more than that now i'll bet so yeah mm-mm, mm-mm. i want a tucson knife just the other day and i can't remember 
which one it was. I'd have to look it up, but it's a smaller one. I'm trying to keep up. That's insane. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Alien. Talisman. Yes, and that was, the talisman was Aus 8, right? Uh, but yes, that was, like, I did review that. That was the first one I ever put my hands on. I thought, I could keep up with this brand. It's pretty cool. Um, no, I haven't seen the Harns Beak, B-E-A-K. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You like? Me likey, that's for sure. Look at that blade. I believe, yes, that's a Dama Steel Blade as well. So, um, wow, that's nice. And where's, come here, let's see if I can get you. And I, I got it in combination. I got it like Keto USA. And I know Ian Wu. I mean, he's the main guy at Keto USA. And he said, oh, um, at the SHOT Show, I told him I bought a couple knives off his site, and he goes, why didn't you contact me? I'll get you a discount. You know, you're going to review them on, my, on your channel, whatever. So, I am definitely in touch with him. But with this alien, and check it out. It's not an integral. But it looks like one, doesn't it? Of course, it gives it away here where the screws come through front and back, right? Um, you know, I a lot of people, oh, this is mall ninja crap, this is bullshit, whatever. I, but all I got to say is, Reich, they do some crazy machine work. I mean, just as a guy who worked at a tool and die shop for three and a half, four years, when I first got out of college and CNC machines were coming into vogue and all that, just the programming, the tooling, the machining, uh, every, the design work, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. The fit and finish you have to have to make that look, uh, you know, like an integral. And, and a lot of them are integrals like the Thor 3, the Thor 1, the Thor 5, the Thor 6, the, you know, on and on. But, and of course, oh, 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 uh, oh, never mind, hold on, because I'm going to show you one more thing. That's, you want to see something sick? Not the coronavirus type sick? Andre de Villiers scavenger, who do you think makes this knife? Hello? Anybody out there? Hello? Any answers? This is an integral. Yeah, I'm just being sarcastic, but you know who makes this knife, right? Of course. Right. And I'll tell you what, Andre, he's got an eye. Because, you know, if you're going to do something insane like this, uh, that's who you want to have do it. Because they know how to do it. But they're always showing off their expertise. But the scavenger, and I bought this from a guy, I can't remember if it was a partial trade. No, I think I just broke down and, and bought it from him because I had sold mine to Gilfoil. And then I go, you know, I don't think I can live without it. Gilfoil took this, it was this color, had it anode in a secondary, so he had some real wild stuff done to it, but more kind of badass looking. Uh, Anno, and I'm thinking about doing something like that with this, but that, my friends, is a thing of beauty, and it is a big, big dog. Hiram, Argentina. Yeah, uh, you know the Hummer. That's what I love. That was probably my favorite ADV knife and the MP lockback that as well oh Chad there you go yeah I know I know I know but this is this is all kinds of it's insane it's insane but that's what I was saying 
on Rike, and I flashed the tool up here, which is insane because I got this and I go, oh, so this is a pen, right? I mean, you can open a bottle with this and you got this for glass breaking or you got this for glass breaking or, you know, obviously self-defense, that kind of thing. And then I'm going, well, mm, where is it a pen? You know? And the answer is, it's not. It's not a pen. It doesn't write. But here's cool all day long, right? So you've got a magnet in here that holds this in place. It's a number eight. Flip it over, it's a number six. So there you go. You carry the pen. And as long as the knife you're carrying is either eight or six Torx, you know, you've got the tool with you. And in a very stylish way, I might add. How about that for cool looking, huh? Are you guys doing good today out there in the USA and around the world? Um, it's, it's good here. It's a little on the cool side, but it's maybe 67, something like that, which I'm not, you know, don't, don't, don't hurt me, but I know, I know most people know you're not having it that good, but uh, yesterday was like 82 and the day before was 81 and we're going to get back to mid 70s well tomorrow I guess it's supposed to be sunny and 75 or 76 so today's a little cooler but still t-shirt weather for me out here um, I was going to show you another thing real quick I got this now I saw this Tucson knife on eBay and I thought, who cares? You know, and so I passed it over. John Agatucci up in Bend, Oregon sent me this knife and in the mail, came yesterday. And so I carried it in my left pocket because I had the screamer in my right pocket and maybe you saw Taylor holding uh, this knife in one of my Instagram feeds. But this one is uh, just a slip joint. But it's Wong Dingen design. And it's an M390 blade. And this thing is crazy, horrible, scary sharp. This thing is crazy sharp. Little choil right there. Check it out. I guess that's just some kind of, you know, synthetic material. I don't know for sure. I'm going to do some studying up on it before I do a review on it. But, and this just looks so 1955, 65, your grandpa's slip joint pocket knife. But I'll tell you what, really when it's open, the design is nice. Oh, who made that pen? It's not a pen. It's Rike, and it's the companion to this one, the Alien. So you can buy this as a combo pack. Okay, sorry. And I think they want 500 bucks for the combo. And um, But I think... Somebody said they'd seen it down to maybe 360 somewhere, maybe on eBay. Check it out. Maybe that didn't include the pen. I don't know. Uh, but check that out. You might be able to get it at a better price. But this is scary sharp, nice and light. And you know, sometimes you just don't appreciate a knife till you have it in your hands. You haven't had much kubi on my tail. You know, I know that. I haven't, have I? Um, I, and I was thinking about that the other day and I went on Kubi site and they got a bunch of new models that I've never put on my site. I need to contact them and tell them that I'd like to, you know, and if I find something, I need to go through their site first and pick out a couple of models and let them know I'm interested in doing a review, see if I can beg a knife off of them. But yes, I haven't done anything Kubi yet. And really, when they first, first, first came out, that's a triple first, uh, you know, 
I don't know that I felt all that strong, but ooh, baby, they playing now. Um, their quality went up very, very quickly, and my contact at Kubi is very eloquent. Um, so I mean, he he knows the stuff, and he knows the different. Uh, knives that are out in the market he's he's very knowledgeable great personality uh and so yes uh and and i think we tested a kubi or two at first and the hrc was wanting you know what i mean and they mm, they got that up very quickly so they were very responsive so yeah i was happy about that but no i don't have a kubi on the table here um you think that's real bone? I think that might be real bone, you know? That might be real bone. Uh, it's got that kind of translucent look, doesn't it? Yes, on this one. Yes. Uh, M390. You know, that little TS-68 that I had checked was a 62 HRC. That's the only M390 knife of any brand that I personally have ever owned and had tested and hit a 62. Even my Tucson Para 2 knives got no better than like 60, 61. They weren't lacking, but they weren't 62. Now I've seen another guy who had a 62.5 on one of his Para 2 uh, knives. So I know they can hit that, but I never have. I haven't. So now we got clouds again, which I can see through my camera better. I don't know what your vision is like watching my stuff, if that makes a big difference to you guys. But, oh, and then this one, which I have really put off doing. My bad monkey from Southern Grind. You know, I decided I want, I want an Emerson Wave on one. Because if I'm going to have a bad monkey, and I want a bad monkey as opposed to spider monkey, and of course this is 14C28N uh, steel on the bad monkey. And i got to get rid of this message. It's blocking my view. God, i got so many things popping up. Um, when I do a video in my studio and I'm not live, I turn on airplane mode because I'm using my phone as a camera. The problem with if you go live and do that, you cannot put it on airplane mode or you won't have access to your Wi-Fi. You, I mean, you can't do it. So you've got to. So I've got these things popping on my screen. Um, spider monkey. Bad monkey. Bad monkey, yes. I wish this was in a higher end steel than this, but I'm okay with it as a user. The pocket clip, any of you guys loving that? Um, I don't know. That just seems, I would make it more slender and maybe a little longer and definitely, uh, kind of bend that over at the very end. Uh, and I'm trying to find a knife that does that and I'm not, uh, one of my G10 knives. Let me see about my Hornet. Yeah, the Hornet. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it comes up. And then it levels out. And this goes right over the lip of your pocket really nicely. This probably will too, but it continues to sit up here. Potential hot spot, I guess. Uh, mm, eh, no, not really for me. Not for me, though. But, yeah. Um, I keep looking at their stuff, but I don't know that I can beat this, really. I really do like this. So, this is about the Southern Grind knife I'm going to own, probably, because uh, it's the right size. It's got the Emerson Wave. It's got a good usable steel. And I like the design, but, you know, it's as good as anything they got, so... Uh, I'm not going to go chasing anything else. But, yeah. I look, like it. Yeah, Spider Monkey. Yeah, Spider Monkey, but that's a smaller knife. You know what I'm saying? So, do I want a Spider Monkey just because they've got a higher-end steel? It's a smaller knife? No, I, I think I'm going to stay bad.
with the bad monkey because he's bad. Okay, so um, what was I going to... Oh, hey, if anybody's interested, and I think I might end on this note and take another hour and about four beers to clean this table up, but... Uh, And I have not, I have had, I've had this for months, months and months. And somebody brought it to my attention. I saw it on Instagram on a Chinese guy's site on Instagram that never tells what knife it is. And so I had to go to another guy that knew how to speak Chinese. And he came back and he says, or he, or he knew it. And he goes, that's, um. That's Fat Dragon, okay? And so I'll get my act together on this and do a review. Nemo Knives, Fat Dragon. This is kind of interesting. You know, it comes in different colors. I think you can get blue. You can get red. Uh, it's got bearings. It's a pretty good size knife. It's really inexpensive, that kind of thing. But I kind of like the design. When I saw it, I just thought it was... Cool as a beater budget, interesting off-brand, off-road thing. Can you guys see that? Designed by Fat Dragon. Supposedly 440. Who cares? I don't think it's worth PMI because they're not saying it's something incredible. They're just saying 440. If it ain't, I don't care. And then... Have you ever had petrified fish? <laughs> oh my God, hold on. How do I do this one? Oh, this just slides out, doesn't it? Okay. So, here you go, everybody. What do you think about this? D2, supposedly, so it probably is worth P a PMI if I can get it somewhere. This is a David Chen design. How about that? It's not billboarded. Petrified fish. I might have to go back on Ollie and see if I can find any other petrified fish <laughs> designs I i'm assuming that's a brand name not the model name that was a fedex box looks like their colors so that's different isn't it liner lock deep carry right hand only I don't have any experience with this and I need to take some time because both this and the Fat Dragon over here I've had since probably last October and just set them aside, you know? Um, but, hey, uh, I don't think they were much more than either somewhere between 27 to $35. And, of course, it's free shipping from Ollie. But, uh, oh, yes, Mr. Tozo. Yeah, like the live stream. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, and you put a lot of comments, and I read, too, as well. Mr. Roboto, 1963. Did you order one of these, bud? Yeah. I have not reviewed one of the petrified fish in the in the past. Somebody said, oh, where's your Reich Alien 4 review on YouTube? Did you delete that? Because I can't find it. And it's like, because I ain't done it yet. Because Mr. Lazy Ass ain't got around to it yet. I got, look at all this shit on the table. Holy moly. But no, I haven't. I haven't got around to doing this. You know why? Because I think this is going to be a keeper for me. And so yeah, if it's going to be a keeper, it's not going to turn up on my table sales. So I can take my time. Plus, nobody's, you know, trying to get my 
me to bring buyer's attention to it. I mean, it's not like Ian sent it to me or something. So I bought it on my own. It was my own exploratory thing. So it's up to my discretion. Um, you know, if somebody sends me an item and says, well, this is kind of time sensitive because I got to get it, you know, because it's going to be released on this day. I'd like to coordinate. Okay, you know, I'll, put, I'll move it up on my schedule. But otherwise, no. And I can just take time and lay back. And where did my damn zipper case go? See, I bought it from a guy on that was bought a knife from me on my uh, on my table sale, and so I gave him back about half his money plus a few hundred to get that scavenger. But that scavenger, that's staying. Oh, you like the petrified devil mark? When is the next table sale? Oh, 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 the fourteenth. That's next Saturday. Kluver was like, hey, why don't you have it on the 13th? And I'm going, damn, that's Friday the 13th. No, the 14th. So I'll do it. Uh, yeah, I'll do it at 5 p.m. my time. And that's going to be now that uh, spring forward, right? So it's going to be 8 o'clock Eastern. Because uh, we don't change with uh, with the we don't do that we don't do daylight savings here in arizona uh so no we'll be now on pacific time i believe so we're three hours shy of the east coast so east coast it'll be eight o'clock it'll be five o'clock here and pacific when that knife sale go up on saturday the 14th that gives me all day sunday uh the 15th to get things boxed up and ready to ship so that's the most convenient for me. So we're going to do that. Where you get what? Tepe knives you showed. Um, I, I got them from uh, Sean. I mean, that's where you buy them at. I went to his um, site and bought the Hornet, uh, the G10 one, and the Titanium one. And then... I think I contacted him on his Instagram to get the carbon fiber one. But when I've done the reviews, I've given you the links there in the top of the comment section where you can find that link, the site that he gives you to go and buy them. Uh, I take Aus 8 over D2 for a good price. Hernandez, yeah, I agree. I really do. Uh, Aus 8, VG10, N690, a lot of people, I mean, you look at the United States alone, not counting South America, Central America, uh, a lot of places in Europe are pretty wet climates as well, but do you want D2? I mean, I've seen even some light pitting on uh, some of my D2 knives here and there, one or two out of a lot, but one or two. And I live in the desert. I mean, I got 5% humidity, but sometimes monsoon season, it'll get to 30 some percent humidity, but other places can be 70%, 90% humidity. I mean, let's get a real stainless as an option would be nice. Um, I don't mind 9CR18. I think too many people look at CR, MOV, um, knives and they think they're automatically MOV means cheap. It doesn't mean cheap. <laughs> um, and so, no, um, 8CR, I mean, look, look, um, there's a good chart to look at. It's AG Russell and AG Russell knives, but they have a steel chart. Go in there and look. Look at the carbon, look at the vanadium. And the, you know, the Molly and all the other uh, in there. And, and you tell me, um, there's not much difference between a lot of those steels in there. So 8CR doesn't bother me. It's how well has the heat treat been done? VG10, I like. Uh, Aus 8, very usable. Uh, 9CR18, I like especially if it's done well. Um, of course, Bench made, made a bunch of H&K knives when they were doing them for H&K in 9CR18. Of course, Louis Crudo, Crudo knives 
has done 9CR18 forever, and they're now flipping to their BA series or badass series. So they're going to S35, VN and stuff in some of them. But still, yeah, um, there's a lot of their 9CR18s out there. No, I didn't show the Elementum. Um, yes, Civivi has gone to 9CR18, and you know what? Nothing wrong with that. Humidity is stupid in North Carolina, isn't it? Man, I, I, it's beautiful country. Um, and my brother has a cabin up near Asheville, right? Is that north? I think that's North Carolina, right? But... No, it's, yes, it's humid and bugs and get a screened in porch. And like you need in Florida too. You need a lanai. You need it screened in. The mosquitoes are the state bird. Yes, they are. And you know, they're going to do that to you in Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Montana. I mean, during the summer, uh, it can be humid, lots of bugs. Uh, you know, so you get, you know, the potential for, you know, for corrosion on a non stainless knife. Now, mm -hmm. You know, Crewware, or M4, or, you know, all these other Rex 45, all that. That's all not stainless either. So you got to take care of it. Get your rag, spray it down with some kind of lubricant, wipe your blades when you're done. I get it. You got to go through that if you got a non stainless because you don't want to end up with, oh, Asheville's west is west of you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. East Coast pretty, big tall trees. Really like the landscape, the geography out there is really cool. Yeah, it's tempting. I, I looked at maybe moving out that way, but I'm still here in the desert and I always regret it come mid to late June when it starts hitting 105 to 108 up to as much as 110 or 14 in a day here or there. It's miserable, but the summers are, I mean, the winters are world class i mean people flock down here um and then the spring and the fall is not bad so you got three seasons out of four you got to suffer through summer you get a little respite when you get monsoon season the wet weather comes up from the gulf the west coast and across the baja sea of cortez and stuff and hits arizona so we get some rain then um in any case Go visit humidity that time of year. Dry heat thing is real. Yeah, uh, yes, but it's it's hot. Dry heat still hot. Can't beat desert life, especially the Sonoran Desert, which is the wettest desert in North America. So, yes, there there's green. I mean, the cacti bloom. In fact, they're fixing to start blooming here, including even. Uh, the saguaro cactus, uh, they bloomed last spring. Wow, that was the first time I think I'd really seen them bloom in mass in a long time. But we had fairly wet winter. So go to Wisconsin, yes, in the, in the summer, yes. Under 200 is the Benchmade 570-1 a good buy. What am I? I'm trying to think of what the 570 is. I can't think about it. Are you talking about what? I don't know the actual model name. Uh, it's not the, uh, I know the 940 and I think the grip is what, the 950 something or is, I don't know, Contigo. I love the Contigo. Will I be attending Blade Show? Yes, I will be. Yes, I will. And I will be there for at least two of the three days of the Blade Show. And my wife hasn't got me booked into a hotel, but I guess I'm going to fly from either Tucson or Phoenix into Atlanta and do the uber thing so wait an hour in kansas i know i grew up in nebraska i know wait an hour weather will change just like oklahoma which is you know that's tornado alley there and i'll tell you what it'll rock and roll uh it really will in uh oklahoma during spring it could be a bit scary actually black knife on the table this one here Sorry, this is the cryo from Cancept Knives. So you may have come in a little late. Um, yeah, meet up at the Blade Show. And, you know, I'm going to try and figure out a way to, uh, you know, organize maybe a meetup where if you, if you guys want to get together 
somewhere and drink some beer and uh, lie about knives and stuff like that. That'd be great. I think it'd be fun. I think we'd have, you know, might wake up in county jail, but at least you know you had a good time. If you wake up in county, uh, it's probably something to report back on. Hey, it was fun. I came in late. Apologies. JD, is there an appreciable upgrade between 8CR and 9CR? Well, you have to look. You'll have to look at that. Um, at, at the at the elements on the sheet, and I'm not looking at it now, but I think it can be. Uh, maybe the the kind of hardness level you can attain without it getting chippy might be better. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, corrosion resistant because it might have more chromium in it. I don't know if the carbon content is appreciable, that kind of thing. And I don't know what the vanadium content difference would be um okay well big sean's saying it's much better uh i would believe that i would um and so that's why savivi's using it and i think some people may diss savivi on that but i'll tell you what i'd rather have 9 cr18 done well than the d2 that they're using now do i got agreement on that oh god before i let you go stop stop Imperial Trooper. God, the provoke. This is one thing I wanted to bring up for sure, right? Yeah, the provoke. I believe, and I don't know, you tell me, but... Oh, you're flipping your 3507. I like my 3507. I've got one, definitely. Um, the PRN, what's the PRN? Somebody's saying, can you show me the PRN? I don't know what they're meaning by PRN. You got to spell it out for me. Oh, pen? Yeah, that's not a pen, though, It's but it's a tool. There you go. Break glass, break glass, and in here, again, the torques that you can change from an 8 to a 6, and it's magnetized in here so it'll hold it in place. And focus, focus. Um, provoke. You want to get provoked? Caswell design? Yes. That baby is really cool. Hold on, let me grab the other. Oh, God, you better be what I think you are. Yes, you are. So, now, did you guys know about this? You can get the, you can get the sheath for it. So, kick this down, bring it back. Here we go. And let me see if I can get this right. Uh, here you go. Just like that. The sheath for the Provoke. And there's only one way it's going to go in, like that. But that's pretty solid. And then it looks like you get the option of the Tech Lock. And... Uh, bu -bu 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 And this, so you've got two different um, attachments here for mounting, and then they give you the hardware, that kind of stuff as well. There's another pouch of hardware in here. And if you get that off of the CRKT site, well, you can buy this Imperial Stormtrooper one, and I think they have a an earth, dark earth, brown one, and maybe a olive green one. Um, I have to look back again, but I saw this at shot and I just thought, oh man, I got to have that. Uh, it was, it was hilarious. So there it is. And with the sheath, I think that's cool. I'm going to put it on my channel, even though I've done a provoke review before. Of course, you know, you have your standard uh, pocket clip here, which you just push down on one end. And it opens the other end here to go in your pocket. Where am I not pushing down right? Where's the pocket clip? Yeah, it's right here. So this is actually it. It'll pop up. I thought it was supposed to pop up in, if you push down here. At least my previous ones did. But this is the pocket clip. 
or you can do this. So I just thought it was cool. I don't know. I, I just wanted to show that one off because that's crazy. Crazy cool. I'm not a big fan of this style of knife necessarily, but uh, just the way it was done and engineered, and it's in D2, I thought it was worth talking about. And here we go, back in here. Okay. Okay. I've done enough damage, I think, for one day. Plus, I'm late on my happy hour. And we can't be late for happy hour, can we? Somebody said that I have to up my beer game. But I like something that tastes like nothing. And uh, I can drink a bunch of and not fall over. So it's great on a hot day. Very refreshing. <laughs> what commercial am I doing? Hey, I've drank Guinness. I've drank half and half, black and tan. I've drank, uh, you know, all the kind of different stuff. Samuel Smith's Pale Ale. And I used to be big on... You know, Francis Connor and a bunch of different ones. What was the one I called? Fat Tire. Uh, I was into Blue Moon for a while. So, there you go. Micron Paste. The leather, the plain leather works great. Okay. Cheers, everybody. See you next time. Just wanted to say it's a great product. Thank you. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to let you go. i got a bunch of cleaning up to do before the sun goes down. It's getting late in the afternoon. What time is it? Our time. It is 20 after 5. So it's going to be dark in an hour. Take care, everybody. You know what we do around here. We love them knives. See you guys. You stay sharp. <laughs>